Soccer, also known as football, footy, the gentlemanly art of footsticuffs, or kicking around the old truncated icosahedron. It is generally considered to be the most popular sport in the world. But to many people, its origins are a mystery. Where does soccer come from, and why is it so popular? What's the whole story? Hi, I'm Nigel Fitzgerald Brewer, and ball kicking sports have been with us for hundreds of years, almost as long as we have had legs. Of course, the original game bears little resemblance to modern day football. According to historical footballologists, the earliest form of this sport wasn't actually a game at all. In the 8th century, criminals were often sentenced to kicking a stone cube for the crime of cobbling without a license. To better prepare themselves to endure this penalty, Groups of outlaws began to band together and toughen up their feet by kicking other materials, such as wood, coal, or butter. Eventually, they were spending so much time practicing kicking that they stopped cobbling altogether. Once the actual act of kicking became more important than the toughening of the feet, players experimented with using a pig's bladder filled with gravel for the ball. When this produced undesired effects, they tried filling the bladder with other materials, such as wool, snow, and fiberglass insulation but finally settled on using air to make the ball lighter and more springy. This change caused considerable backlash from the older, more foot callous players, but the more dynamic gameplay was applauded by spectators who had grown tired of watching the players just kick a rock for hours. The new game became immensely popular, overtaking the previous most popular sport, bear baiting. Teams were formed, regular tournaments were organized, and rivalries were forged. At the peak of its popularity, two incidents cast a shadow over the fledgling sport. During one game, a man impaled himself on his opponent's dagger, dying from his injuries. And during a later game, a man named William de Spalding had an opponent so eager to incite a penalty that he injured himself on de Spalding's sheathed dagger and died at the conclusion of the game six days later. William de Spalding was granted dispensation by Pope John XXII to absolve him of his guilt, which also had the side effect of granting the sport tacit permission for taking a dive, an act which is now largely ceremonial. Tragedy struck the game as, in 1363, during the Anglo-French Cross Channel Cup, the captain of the English team, King Edward III, called a timeout. Now, it is generally agreed that this timeout was a tactic to delay Anglo-French peace negotiations during the Hundred Years' War, but there is considerable evidence that the English team may also have been losing. Whatever the reason for the timeout, Edward III was distracted before he was able to resume play, thus officially ending organized football in England for over 300 years. Football never truly went away, of course, and continued to be played in underground football rings by miscreants and hooligans, which is where we get the term. Of course, access to regulation footballs was impossible, so these illegal games were played with native British armadillos balled up with twine. This, sadly, is why the British armadillo that once roamed in great flocks across the glens and dales of the English countryside became extinct. As public and official opinion on football slowly turned around, the events became increasingly more structured, but there is still no worldwide governing body. That was, of course, until 1904, when the Fédération Internationale de Football Association was formed. As the punchline to the age-old joke, what happens when a Frenchman, a Belgian, a Dutchman, a Dane, a Spaniard, a Swiss, a Swede, and a German walk into a bar. Years later, a chance bar fight over the last cup of ale between members of the FIFA Congress came to blows. But when no winner could be determined, they resolved to settle the matter on the football field, and the competition of the World Cup was born. The festivities of today bear little resemblance to the football of old. FIFA's new automated scoring system has finally replaced the previous orphan-powered scoreboards, the referee's red card is now dyed that color instead of being caked in blood, and the ball is now a truncated icosahedron hand-stitched from space-age polymers instead of a rough-hewn boulder. But 
the spirit of the original game lives on. So there you have it. From convicts breaking their feet on a marble cube to the world famous athletes posing for underwear commercials. The history of football is one of armored rodents, puncture wounds, and cobblers. So the next time you think you know all about something, remember, you may not know the whole story. Conversely, American football, in the form we know it today, was invented entirely as is in 1995 by Byron Kenning, a high school janitor from Akron, Ohio.